The Commonwealth Games are on, with top athletes competing to win gold. Matt Glatzer was determined to add yet another gold medal to his collection, but an unfortunate crash sent him spiraling out of the game with a torn kit and damaged bike. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the unfortunate high-speed crash, so stay tuned. First off, Matt Glatzer and Joe Truman involved in horrible 70 km per hour bike crash. Matt Glatzer had his eyes set on his fifth Commonwealth Games gold medal, but not all dreams come true. His bid for the medal was shattered after a high-speed crash in the Kieran. The crash was pretty bad. Australia's top sprint cyclist was left on London's Olympic velodrome track, completely battered and bruised. His kit was torn, and even his bike got damaged. But this was expected after the 70-kilometer event spill in a mass sprint event. Matt's bike clipped with Jack Carlin's rear wheel as the cyclists struggled against each other for the win. And not only did Matt go crashing down himself as a result, he also took Joe Truman with him. The athlete's condition was constantly monitored overnight on Saturday by a trusted team of Australian doctors. Soon, after the morning qualifications, the decision of whether Matt would participate in Sunday's sprint race was made after consulting the medics in charge of him. The fact that Matt wants to make it to the start line even after such a horrific fall shows his courage and will as an athlete, despite having to fight multiple setbacks, including thyroid cancer and some serious injuries. Next up, Joe Truman left with concussion and broken collarbone. Honestly, while Matt had it bad, it was nothing compared to what happened to Truman. The English cyclist was sent crashing with Matt and suffered a concussion, not to mention a suspected broken and collarbone. He even needed oxygen on the spot and took some time to come around from his concussion. When he did, though, the shocked fans immediately started to cheer him on. Joe acknowledged his fans as he was taken away by the medics. Several people were asked about their opinion of the frankly terrifying crash. Chris Boardman, who's an Olympic champion and British commentator, acknowledged that this could have been career-ending and felt sick just watching the crash. He went on to say that it was a bad crash and for some time they hadn't detected any movement. Chris seemed extremely relieved that Joe was up and moving even if only for a bit. When he'd noticed that there was no movement for a few seconds, it had made him feel quite sick. Same as Chris, Joe's teammate Carlin also left horrified by the crash. Chris wasn't the only one completely horrified at the crash. Carlin, who's a GB teammate of Joe, said that he was left reeling from the horrifying crash. The athlete admitted that he felt Matt go into his back wheel, but he's not sure what happened after that. One thing's for sure though, it wasn't easy for Carlin to see his teammate on the floor unmoving. He'd known Joe for a long time, and Carlin saw that he'd taken a good hit when he went crashing to the floor. According to Carlin, Joe's an extremely strong-willed athlete. This isn't the first time he's had a few issues in his career, but he always overcame these setbacks and came out stronger. So Carlin, like everyone else, is hoping that this is only a hiccup. The athlete stated that he was hoping that this was nothing too serious and that Truman will probably be on the bike again in a matter of weeks. The cyclist still has a lot to aim for, such as the Nations Cup, the World Championships in Glasgow, and the Paris Olympics. More importantly, the 25-year-old has time on his side, and he'll definitely come back strong stronger than ever. The horror crash was similar to the equipment malfunction that sent Alex Porter crashing at the Tokyo Olympics. Finally, who ended up winning? In the final later, Glatzer's colleague Matt Richardson ended up finishing fourth. Chris ended up finishing second, proceeding to take silver, while Trinidad's Nicholas Paul snatched up the gold. The 23-year-old also won silver at the World Championships last year, but this win was especially meaningful. It was the first time Trinidad and Tobago had a podium win since Roger Gibbon in 1966. The cyclist celebrated with his country's flag and said that it was a big thing for them. He's had other wins, but this was really big and he was very happy with his performance, especially since cycling's been gaining popularity there. Gletzer and Truman were understandably out of the game as a a result of their earlier crash. Now, in other news, Maeve Plouffe wins her second medal within 24 hours. Maeve Plouffe has managed to win her second medal within 24 hours. She'd won in the team event and has now added a silver medal to her portfolio by coming in second in the 3,000 meter event. The 23-year-old was thrilled that her team had managed to get gold and now has an individual title to her name as well. Maeve clocked the second fastest qualifying time but couldn't get gold because she was beaten by New Zealand's Byron Ibotha. The athlete had already set a games record earlier that that morning with 319.836 and soared past it with 318.456. On the other hand, Plouffe miscalculated her tactics and went down from 321.995 to 327.122. She said it was pretty tough, and since she's young, she's still getting a hand on the tactical side of things. She continued by saying that she'd been excited and went off way too hot. She tried to conserve her energy for the later part of the race, but it ended up being a mistake, and she'd do it differently if she could have a do-over. The 36-year-old Sarah 
Roy ended up missing a bronze medal by a hair's breadth in the 3000 meter, as Nia Evans ended up taking third place with a time of 3.23.476. Secondly, India beats Pakistan in cricket, while Australia bags ticket to semi-finals. While Australia is progressing to the semi-finals after their victory over Barbados, India won against Pakistan by eight wickets in the Commonwealth Games. At the start of the match, Pakistan won the toss and elected to bat, but a strong bowling execution by Smriti Mandhana and a great opening stand by Shafali Verma was a great help to India emerging victorious in the match. India's first win of the Commonwealth Games in 2022 was earned in an 18 overs per side match affected by rain. Pakistan lost a wicket early in the game but still had a solid batting start. After the ninth over, Snei Rana took two wickets of batters Muniba Ali and Bisma Maruf and things took a turn for the worse. India pressured the Pakistani team with brilliant fielding and continuously felled more wickets. Coming to Australia's match, the Australian team won the toss and was elected to field. They defeated Barbados relatively easily, winning by nine wickets. The Barbados team was unable to deal with Alana King's leg spins and got bowled out at 64 while the Australians chased down that score easily. Next up, all seven British teams get disappointing results at the Commonwealth Games. On Saturday, the Sevens program of England went through one of its most disappointing days after both the women's and men's team dropped out of medal contention on only the second day of the competition in the Commonwealth Games of 2022. After being defeated by New Zealand, both sides will be participating in placement matches for the remaining time of the tournament. After a bleak start on Saturday, facing losses against both Samoa and Canada, the men's team went on to lose with a score of 20-0, while the women's team lost with a score of 38-7. The result was rather surprising due to the fact that English players were the majority of the Team GB squads that placed fourth at the Tokyo Olympics last summer. The two teams won bronze medals at the previous games on the Gold Coast four years ago. The men's squad went through a huge overhaul in the last few years, with famous players like Dan Norton and Tom Mitchell being excluded from the program. Hence, the struggles being faced currently should have been expected up to a certain point. Finally, Victor Kaplangat ran the wrong way in the marathon and still won a gold medal. In the men's marathon at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, the runner Victor Kaplangat of Uganda ran the wrong way but still won the gold medal. Although at the start he had a big lead, things were no longer so smooth sailing by the end of the race. Near the end, the 22-year-old took a wrong turn and started running in the opposite direction from the finishing line. Once he realized his mistake, aerial footage showed Kaplangat quickly correcting his mistake. Despite this error, Kaplangat was able to fix his direction and emerge victorious due to his long lead, becoming a Commonwealth champion. During the race, many commentators were shocked by the turn of events. Steve Cram defended the Ugandan national, saying that it wasn't his fault because he followed the vehicle and there was a blue line. There should have been a lead bike. The running legend Paula Radcliffe from Britain also agreed with Cram, stating that Kaplingat may have been focused on the bike in front of him because the blue line often disappears as they haven't marked out a specific section and because it's a dash and not a solid blue line. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think of the horrific high-speed accident involving Joe Truman and Matt Glatzer? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.